Welcome to episode 83 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and I will be your host. And today, I'm going to look my two-star review straight in the eye. Clarity can only really exist in the light of truth. Branding just isn't a tactic. It's a lifestyle change. The moment of clarity this week is you don't need a new thing. New doesn't fix anything. And I think we always look for new relationships or new jobs or new scenarios because we feel like the problems in our life are because we don't have the new thing, we have the current thing. But the truth is the current thing is probably good enough. Typically the pursuit and always needing something new has to do with something inside that isn't right and isn't settled. So instead of finding the new thing this week, I want you to take a look inside and think, maybe the new thing isn't gonna fix it. I'm so excited for what he's gonna show me. Hurry up and show me Paul's pick. My pick for the week is the opposite of a curing pot and it's percolated coffee. My wife and I broke out the percolator this week and I know people say it's bitter and it doesn't taste good, but guess what? Waiting for it, hearing that thing perking and waiting 20 minutes to make it, smelling it in the air while we're doing it, it actually just makes the coffee taste better because the experience is better. I posted it on my Instagram account and I had more DM responses to that post about people saying they love percolator coffee and they were so glad to see me using it that I had to make it my pick for this week. So my pick, percolated coffee, get yourself a percolator and make yourself some percolated coffee. All right, I'm not even gonna dance around this because it doesn't need to be danced around. Criticism and feedback are just a part of life. I mean, there's not one person listening to this or watching this that has never been criticized or has never received feedback. It just is a part of all of our lives, especially if we want to do anything that is outward, that anything that isn't just sitting in the corner and coloring and filling in the dots. But the way it's absorbed and the way it's responded to really defines our level of maturity. It defines our level of security. It highlights, um, I think, is a great indicator how you respond to feedback and criticism is a good indicator of your actual growth potential because if you can't take criticism or feedback well, you kind of get stuck. I mean, we see this all th across the spectrum. When you see like pro athletes acting like kindergartners, and we've seen it where guys have thrown such tantrums and have been so me-centered and can't handle criticism and feedback, like so much so that they lose their jobs, like making millions of dollars years as athletes. So I think it's a great indicator of potential and growth potential. You know, so I'm going to start this. I'm going to ask this at the end of the podcast again, but I want to start today by saying like, how do you handle criticism and feedback? Think about it. Is it just a naturally good response? Is it tough? Does it hurt? Does it sting? We're going to talk about this because today I got a two-star review on my book, which frankly is my book, but really it's me, I wrote the book. I The book is my voice, my life. So I got some criticism today. My first response to the book, criticism, I read it, I'm going to read it to you, was like, okay. Today, I got a two-star review from Amy. Amy, I don't know who you are. You look like a shadowy figure. Boom. Roasted. Um, on the Amazon uh, thumbnail picture, but that's okay. So Amy gave it a two-star review. And the review says, I appreciate Paul's passion, but it definitely wasn't a how-to book. This was, to me, an easier said than done scenario of philosophy. Speakers will always lose me when they try comparing our small businesses to Amazon or Apple and ask why we can't be more like them. Completely unfair comparison. Those are extremely unique, one in a million, multi-billion dollar companies that are global, have no franchisees, and are in complete control of their product with no departures from that in their company-owned stores. Not to mention, they want to take over the world and control all retail. 
to compare to limited time and budgets of a small business person is not credible, in my opinion, especially when we have literally hundreds of competitors with the exact same products offered in a cutthroat, high expense environment. A better buy-in is to show me specific example examples of people in my business and what they have done, a step-by-step -step implementation strategy. Paul does a great job of marketing and hyping the product. I think he's a fascinating guy. Thank you. I don't know if that's good or bad though. Okay, ideally, some great ideas and practicality, a little tougher to pull off with limited budgets, limited time, and limited workforce. Certainly, a hybrid approach, approach could be possible. That's Amy, two-star review of my book on Amazon, and I just want to start by saying, Amy, thank you. I really mean it. Thank you. I'm not saying that because I want to like take the higher road or anything like that. Amy bought the book. Amy read the book. Amy wrote a thoughtful paragraph, two paragraphs of review. And I am very grateful for that because Amy has some valid points. There's a way that you can take criticism and take feedback that does define and define you as a person, it is an indicator on your level of maturity, your level of growth. A couple weeks back, or maybe more than a couple, back on episode 76, I got to sit down with Dr. Nicole Lipkin, who's a, um, a therapist and an organizational psychologist. I don't know if she's an organizational psychologist. She helps people figure things out. Um, she's got an MBA. She works with a lot of businesses and actually has owned a practice for a long time, so has practice at like the very like interpersonal one-on-one -on -one level. And we talked about a concept of mental agility and not this mental agility where it's like, hey, I can think of that and then I can think of this and then I can twist here. No, but mental agility, we defined it basically as the ability to objectively listen to opposing um, philosophies, opposing trains of thought, and not let your emotions overrun that opposing thought because you disagree with it, but being open to absorbing the information empathizing and understanding why they feel that way, and then taking the useful parts and using that to inform your own opinion and your own decision. So talking about feedback, talking about criticism, let's get a little bit more personal right now. So think about what your initial response to criticism is. And I know it's going to be different in different areas, but think about what the initial response is. And the next thing I want you to think about is that who in your life or which channel when feedback comes in or criticism comes in from that person or that channel, what is the one that impacts you the most, that cuts you right to the core, that gets you defensive or riles you up? What is, what is that? The next question is, why is that the most difficult? So where does the feedback and criticism hurt the most when it comes from? Which channel is that? Which person is that? Why is it the most difficult to handle that specific one? I think that'll be a good indicator for you of your values, of your identity. And then ask, am I listening to it? Is it worth listening to? And then am I really internalizing or am I spending all my time and mental energy fighting back? For me, it's my relationship with my wife. When she has some criticism or she has some feedback, it's not criticism typically, it's usually just feedback, but I just get a little defensive, sometimes a lot defensive. And I wanna justify my position so much that I don't listen to what she's actually saying. And I don't consider that she's actually trying to help and she's actually for me and not against me. And when I do slow down and when I do listen to that and consider that, man, a whole new world of opportunity opens up in front of me and I start to understand like, wow, I can be a really a better person and we can be happier and I can be more confident as a result. I hope that episode 83, I hope that talking about my two-star review today encourages you a little bit to kind of really evaluate how you take criticism and kind of listening to ways and how you can absorb it, how you can be agile enough to let it make you better. I appreciate having you here. As usual, send me some DMs, uh, review the book on Amazon, review the podcast. Hey, if you're enjoying the podcast and you're really listening this far into the episode, um, I consider you a super fan. Aside from that, I hope you have a great week. I hope you take any criticism and feedback well, and I hope that it makes you better. Until then, pursue clarity. I'll see you next week. Yeah.